Um, if you didn't, make sure you put that work and answer on your shark bite answer sheet. The next time we do another shark bite, you'll be turning that in. Um, on your course calendar, notice that there's really only two objectives. Parallel and perpendicular lines and word problems. So we're going to spend a couple days on word problems. Um, the Delta math for word problems is listed twice, but that's the same one. So there's only two delta maths, two objectives for this unit. So it's going to be kind of a quick unit. And then we'll be taking our quiz and test um, the 17th, the 21st, and then flex it. Any questions about that? Oh, one other thing. <coughs> Everything from this unit is going to go on quarter two. So whatever your current grade is, unless you finish tests, retake, uh, upload, finish Delta Maths, 
it will be your marking period one grade unless you do those things. So come see us after school, meet before school, use your time after practice in class to get those things done as soon as possible because the quarter ends here in a few weeks. Any questions about that? Alright. So we're going to start notes on parallel and perpendicular lines today. The definition are lines that never intersect, which means lines that never cross. Algebraically, we know two lines are parallel if they have the same slope. We've talked a lot about slope and how to write it, how to find it, how to graph it. So we're going to be dealing with that again. And then perpendicular lines, they intersect at a 90 degree angle. So they make like a T, not an X, but more like a T or a cross. And then they have negative or opposite reciprocal slopes, and we're going to talk about what that means here in a second. From geometry, you might recognize the symbols for parallel and perpendicular lines off to the side. The two lines, the two vertical lines, means parallel. The upside down T is your perpendicular. Um, and in that last part where it's talking about negative reciprocals, that's a fraction that is flipped. So we've used the word reciprocal before where we take it and we flip it. So a fraction that is flipped and the signs are switched. So we'll talk about what that means here in a, in a second. We're going to try some of the negative reciprocals so we can see what those are. Evan, do you have a question? change. For this first one, I'm going to flip it. So instead of three-fourths, it would be four-thirds. And this was positive, so I'm going to make this one negative. So then for the next one, I have to think about this as a fraction, two over one. What would that negative reciprocal or flipped 
version with a different sign C. What about number three? Positive eight over seven. Number four. This, this negative one, yeah. Because this is really one over one. So if I flip that and make it negative, it's negative one over one, but that just simplifies to negative one. Now, this one is a little challenging. So I can still put this over one, sure, but that's still going to be zero. So if I flip that upside down and make it negative, well, anything divided by zero is what? Undefined. So zero and undefined are negative reciprocals. It will look like this, but you need to know that that's undefined. Okay. So you may have seen this in geometry where we kind of did this. We're going to touch on this and then move on to other things. So we're going to determine if these are parallel, perpendicular, or neither by using our slope formula. I will write that off to the side. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And we're going to find the slope formula for both of these sets of points. Do one at a time. So I'm going to start with AB. Label them X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And then I'm going to find the slope for that by putting each number into this. So Y2 would be 6 minus y1 is 3 over x2, 2 minus x1, negative 2. Or if you want to put plus 2, that's fine. And simplify. What would that slope be? What is that slope? Also three fourths. So if we have the same slope, then those are going to be parallel. So parallel lines have the same slope. So I'm going to draw the symbol for the parallel, the two vertical lines. So anytime we have the same slope, those are going to be parallel. Questions on that? Same process, use that slope formula for both. Go put your phone up. You need to go do that. Yeah. What would this look be? That would be which type? Parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Parallel is also the same. Perpendicular. So if they have negative reciprocals, they are perpendicular. Okay, that's 
Now I'm going to show you some neither, neither of these. So let's do number three. Minus 8 over 2 minus the negative 1. <clears throat> what would that slip be? Negative 2. Mm. Negative 2 over 3. And then to the bottom, 3 minus 2. Over three minus a negative one. What is that? Four in the denominator. One over four. So these are not the same. They're not negative reciprocals. So this would be in either case when they obviously don't match at all. Some other neither, neither cases are, let's say they look the same, they both have the same number, but one is positive, one is negative. Well then, they're not parallel because they're not the same. So I'll give you an example. If I just wrote three-fourths and negative three-fourths, those are not parallel because they're not the exact same. They both don't have the same sign. They're also not perpendicular because one isn't flipped, one isn't the reciprocal. Or, let's say we had reciprocals, but they were either both positive or both negative. Yes, they are reciprocals, but because one isn't the opposite sign, those are still a neither neither case. There are a bunch of those. Questions on any of those? I'm going to try one more of these, and then we're going to move on to the equations part. So let's look at number five on the back. And we're going to do that same process. Find the slope for AB. What would that slope be? Nine over, over not one, but, but zero. We're going to leave this like as is for now. We'll come back to it in a second. And then negative five minus a negative five over six minus. What would that slope be? So right now, before I change anything, do we think these are going to be parallel to neither or neither? And that would make sense because they don't look the same. But with, in a case like this, I have to keep simplifying because zero over three would give me zero, and nine over zero would be what? Not zero. Not nine, three. So put that in your calculator. Undefined. Undefined. Now looking at zero and undefined, would those be parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Perpendicular. So it's a trick question. So when you see this, keep simplifying so that you get to this part, and then those would be perpendicular. Okay, and then kind of vice versa. So if you saw two of the same parallel, um, <coughs> two of the same types like zero over three, zero over five, those would both be parallel, or nine over zero and zero over three, sorry, nine over zero and three over zero, those would both be parallel also. Okay, so now in the next part, we're just giving equations and we just have to determine are these parallel to zero or neither. So in 9, looking at just the slopes, the y don't matter right now, would this be parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Mm. 
don't need it. Parallel, why? Because they both have seven. Yes, the x part doesn't really matter, but because they both have seven, they have that same slope, these are parallel. Remember, the two lines stand for parallel. Okay, what about 10? Perpendicular because they are flipped versions and one is positive, one is negative. What about 11? Neither, neither, yes, because though they look the same, one's positive, one's negative, so not parallel. They're, one is positive, one is negative, but they're not flipped versions, so neither, neither. We're going to try one of these, and then I'm going to show you um, 16. So if you've got something like this, you would need to solve it first, get them both back in slope and intercept form. Anyone remember how we do that for this both equation? We just did an example like that on the short break. Mm -hmm. How would you start that? To get y by itself. Mm -hmm. Subtract x on both sides for just this equation. So we have 6y equals, I'm going to switch those, negative x plus 30. And then. So y equals negative 1 6 x plus 5. Okay, we'll come back and talk about whether they're parallel or perpendicular in a second. How would I get y by itself for the second equation? Not minus. Because we already have x over there. So this is like it's already at this step. We just have to divide it. So now that they're both in slope intercept form, we can look at the equations. Are those parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Why neither? Because mm -hmm. so the y intercept doesn't matter. How are you? The y intercept doesn't matter. So if the y intercept doesn't matter, we just go find it. Anyone else have an opinion what they think this intercept is? I don't think so. I was going to say maybe like These are split versions of each other, and one is negative, one is positive. So be very careful when you're thinking it could be neither or neither, but make sure they're not split versions of themselves, and one isn't positive, one isn't negative. Okay, do you have any questions about that? <coughs> Yeah, just by looking at the slopes. Okay. So for 16, we have y equals and x equals. The slopes are not given, but we, we need to know what those are. These are right our 40 bucks. Horizontal lines have zero slope and our y equals. Vertical lines have 10 to slope and our x equals. So for the y equals, that has what type of slope? For the y equals, which slope does it have? Zero or undefined? 
So this slope is zero, and then the x would have a slope of And because we know, or sorry, before I get into that, zero and undefined are what? Parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Perpendicular. Perpendicular. So anytime you see something like this, where you have a y equals and an x equals, that's always going to be perpendicular. I'm going to draw that for you so you can visualize. If they were the same, like a y equals and a y equals, parallel, or an x equals and an x equals, also parallel. So you don't have to draw this, but just so you can visualize what that looks like. The y equals 6 would be something up here. And the x equals negative 1 would look something like this. So I can see that they cross and they make that change. Okay, questions on that part? So that's the first part, being able, yeah. So when we talk about slopes or graphing, we talk, we touched on this. Yeah. Anytime we have a y equals, that slope is always going to be zero. And anytime we have an x equals, that slope is always going to be negative. Anytime we see y equals, just a number. Now y equals just a number, not the whole thing. Okay. All right. So that was part of what we need to talk about with parallel perpendicular. The second part is on the next page. So in this, we're going to be given some equation and given some point. So this is going to be very similar to the writing that we were doing where we had a slope and a point or two points. Be very similar to that. Where we're going to be given a point uh, and an equation, keeping in mind that parallel lines have the same slope and perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal. So we're going to be using our point slope slash the slope intercept form again. I will rewrite that point slope over here. So just like the writing, we need to be able to do both or just the point slope. So in number one, we are going to be writing an, another equation, not the one that's given, but something similar to it. A line that passes through the given point, so that's going to be our x1, y1, that is parallel, which means they have the same slope, to this line. So the only thing we're going to use from this line is this slope. Cross off that y intercept, we don't need it. We won't be using it. It's kind of just there to show us what that equation was. Except for in two, because we gotta solve that one, so that one's different. So if this is parallel, the slopes are the same, that means my slope is still gonna be negative four. Nothing's changed. And then I'm gonna use point slope for this example and we'll use slope intercept for the next example. Then I'm gonna put everything back into this as we did with our writing. Y minus our y1, seven equals our negative four. Parentheses x minus our negative 2, or you can put plus 2. I'm going to go ahead and make that plus 2 before I do anything else. I will keep that in there. And then I can distribute, just like we did before, the negative 4 to everything inside. And get rid of the 7 by adding on both sides. So that y equals negative 4x minus 1. 
And if we compare that to the one they gave us, they should have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. Because if it had the same y-intercept, they'd be the same one. So these two lines are parallel to each other. And I'm going to show you how you can look that up, or uh, double check it, and that won't scare anyone. What questions, confusions do we have right now? So here, when we after we distributed and got negative eight, and then we added seven, that negative eight plus seven gave us negative eight. Other questions on this? Um, Michelle, could you write here? Okay. So then for the next example, it's going to be similar, except we have to fix this first. We have to change it back into slope intercept before we do anything else. We can do that off the side. So we're going to rearrange this, convert it back to slope intercept form, get rid of x by subtracting on both sides, switch these so that it starts to look like y equals mx plus b. And then divide everything by negative 3. So that this becomes a positive one third x minus 3. Now, that's not our final answer. That's just us rewriting this original equation so that I can look at my slope. <coughs> so I can start the process to actually get my answer. Any questions before we start that process? So now that we have this equation, I'm going to cross out that y-intercept. I don't need it. I know this is going to be my slope because it's parallel. It's going to be the same. And this is going to be my point, x1, y1. I'm sorry. I said we were using the slope intercept form, so this x and this y. So if I'm just using the slope intercept form here, this would be negative 1 equals my slope one third times three plus b. And then I could multiply one third and three. Do that to move to get. One third times three. <coughs> if you didn't have it in your calculator, go ahead and do that. One. And then I can get rid of one by subtracting on both sides. So then my equation would be y equals the slope I originally found, one third, x uh, minus my y minus three. So you can use either method, but you need to know how to do both. Do we have any questions about that? to use that. You can use both, but be able to use that. Okay, so we just did parallel examples. Now we're going to do the same thing with perpendicular, and then I'm going to let you guys practice. So it's going to be very similar to what we just did, and I'll do the same thing. Point slope for this one, slope and up for the second one. Except, because this is perpendicular, I have to change my slope before I do anything else. 
I can still cross off that y-intercept because that doesn't matter. But what would my perpendicular slope to this be? What would my negative reciprocal be? <coughs> negative 1 over 2. So we have to do that first. If you put in the slope that's given and then start that process and change it at the end, you won't get the right answer. So we're going to use the point slope on that one. This is our x1, our y1. So y minus 3 equals our slope negative 1 half, parentheses x minus 4. Go ahead and distribute the negative 1 half. This would become a positive 2. And then add 3 on both sides. So that y equals negative 1 half x plus 5. So when I look at these two equations, the original and the one we just found, I can tell they're perpendicular because of the slopes. Here. So I'm not going to split this We did not do that to the parallel one because those needed to be the same. Other questions on that before we do this last one? I show you how to put it in Desmos and then you practice. Okay. So just like example two, we have to change this first before we can do anything else. So let's subtract 5x. So that we have 3y equals negative 5x minus 21. And divide everything by 3. So y equals negative 5 thirds x minus 7. Except I don't need that 7. I can cross it out. Now again, that's not the answer. I just rewrote this equation in slope and set form. It's perpendicular, so I have to change this slope. What would that new slope be? If I found the reciprocal of this slope. 3 over 5. Then I can put this back into, I'll use the slope and set form. So using our y equals mx plus b, I'll put this in for x and y. So 1 equals our slope 3 fifths, our x uh, negative 5 plus b. <coughs> Multiply 3 fifths and negative 5. 5s the would cancel, the negative would stay. And then get rid of 3 by adding. Yeah, do that so if I were to rewrite our <laughs> final equation using our slope and y-intercept, what would that equation be? One equals, what's our slope? x and then our y intercept 4 plus 4 yes okay so I'm going to show you how to do how to check this in Desmos um, and then I get 
ask you one question and then you'll practice. So we, I think I mentioned this before. Let's say we were doing number four and I wanted to double check, did I solve this correctly? I would put in the original. So I could see that graph. I could put in the equation I got, which was uh, negative 5 fifths x minus 7. And they should overlap, as I did. And then when I find my new equation, which was 3 fifths x plus 4, They, yes, it looks like an X, but if I look at it kind of sideways, it is making that perfect thing right there. Okay, questions about that? Okay, before you guys do your those math, um, your opinion on this. This won't change for today, but I could change it for the next one. Um, currently, you guys are access, as, accessing, I can't see, uh, does math through the assignments. Um, would you rather continue to do that, or I think I found a way to move all, all of the delta math to the side link so you can see them all at the same time. So would you prefer them in the side link? If so, raise your hand. That was majority of them. Um, I have to ask seven, three, or two, but once I do that, it won't change for today, but I'll change it for moving forward. Okay. So you guys can work on the parallel and perpendicular lines um, of math that is due on Friday.